Chapter 4, Storyboarding and Navigation, Step-by-Step -step Movie, 4.1. Now that we've created our new project, we want to select main.storyboard in the project navigator on the left side of the Xcode window. When we do this, we can see a view controller. In fact, I'm going to double click on the storyboard and based on the resolution I'm using for recording here, uh, you couldn't see the whole thing, but now you can. So you can see that this is a large square marked view controller. So this somewhat resembles an iOS device if there were a square iOS device, but it's complete with a battery icon on the right hand side. So this square is called a scene and it represents one screen full of information in an iOS app. And if you look closely at the bottom of the screen, you'll see a control labeled WNE Height Any. That stands for Width and Height Any. When a storyboard is set to these values, it indicates that you are designing your user interface to work for any size iOS device, whether it's the iPhone 4, iPhone 5, iPad, or whatever new device Apple comes out with. And the square shape of the scene visually reinforces the fact that you're designing an interface that works for any iOS device. But to make this tutorial as straightforward as possible, we're going to design specifically for an iPhone. So to do this, I'm going to click on the white area of the storyboard, and I'm going to the right side of the Xcode window and select Show the File Inspector. Underneath Interface Builder Document, I'm going to uncheck the box Use Size Classes. And this is going to display a warning that says, are you sure you want to disable size classes? And we do, and we're going to keep the size class data set for iPhone, and I'll select disable size classes. So notice as soon as I did that, we now have something that's shaped like an iPhone 5. I can double click to zoom in, and now we can see the new view controller set up for iPhone 5 layout. With the storyboard still selected, and the file inspector are visible. Let's also uncheck the Use Auto Layout option. We'll dive into Auto Layout later in this book series, but for now, this user interface doesn't require the advanced features of Auto Layout. Now, ultimately, this scene that was automatically added to the storyboard for us doesn't suit our needs, so we need to delete it. To do this, I click at the very top of the scene in what's known as the scene dock, and notice that it's now outlined in blue, and I press the delete key. And now I have a completely empty storyboard. Now according to the instructions in the book, our next step tells us to add a navigation controller. So I'll do that. I click on navigation controller, I drag and drop over here. You can see it's a pretty good size, so I can just click off and move in a little closer together. I can even double click to zoom out. Now, if you didn't see the object library over in the right hand side, you can make it visible by selecting View, Utilities, Show Object Library. There's a few things to notice regarding the navigation controller we just added. First of all, on the left side of the storyboard, we're seeing an arrow. And this arrow indicates the navigation controller is the first scene to be displayed when the app is first launched. Now, more obvious is the fact that on the right-hand side, a root view controller was added along with a navigation controller. This root view controller contains a table view that can contain a list of items. So Xcode assumes that since you added a navigation controller, you want a list of items displayed when your app first launches. And that works out just fine for us. So let's go ahead and build the project. To do that, I can either select Product Build, or I can just type Command B. So I go ahead and build my project. And you can see that I have a few warnings over here. We can ignore these warnings for now, and we'll take care of them later on. But before we run the app in the simulator, we're going to make one small change. So I'm going to zoom back in, and I'm looking at the root view controller. And I'm going to select the area down here that says Table View Prototype Content. And then I'm going to go to the Attributes Inspector. Now, if this panel is not visible, 
in your Xcode window, you can make it visible by selecting View, Utilities, and this will say Show Utilities. So before you change any of these attribute settings, it's good to check the text that's right here. And here we can say we have selected a table view, and that's exactly what we wanted to select. Now what we're going to do is change the content from dynamic prototypes to static cells. Notice when we change this setting, the appearance of the table view changed. So these items here are known as cells, and these cells that we set up at design time are used to produce rows in the table view at runtime. So now we're ready to run the app in the simulator. First thing I'm going to do is make sure my scheme is set to iPhone 5S, and we can see that it is. If I have a device attached to it, um, it'll show that device here. But I'm going to select iPhone 5S as the simulator that I'd like to view this app. And I'll click the Run button. When I do that, I see it rebuilds the project again. My build succeeded, and my app is now displayed in the simulator. So here's that table view, and we can see that it's full of those empty cells that we saw on the design surface. So if this is the first time you run an app in the iPhone simulator, it's pretty exciting. So to get back to Xcode, if Xcode is visible, and it probably should be, you can just click on it. Otherwise, you can press Command-Tab to get back to Xcode. 